Hello everybody, this is Robert again. Uh, I think we would uh, continue from where we were in the last video. Here we have Muse and I started it like before uh, from the app image here and we have Jack running in the background. Uh, what we are presented with here is the arranger and the arranger is split up in two parts. We have the track list and we have the canvas where uh, every, all, all the editing or all the parts are done. Uh, in the track list, we can right click and we can add stuff. Uh, for instance, I can add a MIDI track where we could uh, use an external keyboard to record MIDI into this track. Or we could start by creating a part on this track. And doing that, we use the pencil tool and you see there's uh, a small uh, not so small there's a d at the end is the shortcut and i strongly recommend learning the basic shortcuts because muse is very much done to, to be used with shortcuts so i press d on the keyboard now to switch to the draw tool and we draw a part here now when we if we double click on this one uh, we bring it up in the piano roll. And the same thing goes here. We have the tools, the pointer, the pencil, and so on. And I can switch between them with, in this case, A for pointer and D for pencil. So I can go to the pencil, go back like that, and we can add notes like this. Uh, that's, uh, let's, um, remove that one and we start on another way I prepared some stuff before here we have uh, a wave file that uh, an external wave file that we can just drag to the canvas and there will be if we don't drag it to an already existing track a track will be created if the wave file is compatible with how Muse is set up for the moment. So if we expand this a little bit like that, we can see that's a stereo wave file and uh, we can play just a, a little bit here so you can hear that. Like that. Uh, a song I made a long time ago, or rather recorded, it's actually not my song. Uh, and in any case, we'll remove that one and uh, this is, uh, if this is going too fast for you, you can always uh, pause and go back and look at it again. Uh, let's do one other thing. I have a MIDI file here too. Uh, let's drag this here. And now we get this uh, cue if we want to add it to the project or replace it. And uh, probably most people will do add to project. So here we have now uh, a lot of MIDI information and we can, be right, like before, we can double click on them and see. And I can press escape to go back to the arranger. Uh, all of these are now uh, connected to the, this port, XP MIDI Mate, uh, is my external MIDI device, which I have my keyboard connected to. But I can't, um, I, I, I mean, I guess I could send the meter there and play it there, but then you couldn't hear it. So what we'll do is that we'll right click here and bring up a soft synthesizer. And uh, an easy way to show this is to use the fluid center very, today it's a very old, but very useful synthesizer. Uh, we have our own version of it. Fluid Synth is, uh, exists in a lot of different versions and we have our own, that's, so that will always be included with news. Uh, and I add that one. And we double click on the port to bring up the interface. And what we need to do now is we need to load a sound font. Fluid Synth is a sound font player. 
So we go here and I had a tiny, uh, an old school sound font that uh, probably a lot of people used uh, long ago in the Sound Blaster days. Uh, we have the sound font and we need to enable it for a number of uh, MIDI channels. We can actually see here which channels are used. Channel 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 for the drums. So we pretty much enable all of them. And the reason why Fluid Synth doesn't uh, default to this is that we can load several fonts here and assign them to different if that uh, would have been interesting. Usually it's not because in Muse it's, it's, it's often more easy to add another instance of Fluid Synth or whichever synthesizer. Uh, we do it like that. We enable them and we can take the 10th and we can also, I'm not sure this is needed, but we can set it to be a, a drum type. So let's quit out of this. Now uh, there's one more thing. We see that this one is, uh, this device is called Fluid Synth, the port's Fluid Synth, but all of these are for the XP MIDI. Then we can uh, click on the first one, hold shift, press on the last one, and right click on one of them and change to Fluid Synth. Now we should be able to, to get some noise here. So let's go here where the drums come in. Beautiful. Well, maybe not, but uh, it makes sound and it can certainly be made to sound beautiful. Uh, so what else should we do? We talked about the tools. Here we have the transport. Uh, I'm not sure. I never clicked here, I think, because uh, I'm, I automatically reach for the space key. So I, I, I click on the space when I start and stop. And you see, for the moment, uh, when playback stops, when I stop it like that, it moves back to the previous position. This is a setting here. Uh, rewind on stop. There is a shortcut for it too, but it's not written here. It's in a coming version. You can see which shortcut, shortcut it is. But uh, we can talk about shortcuts when we are on the subject. There are a lot of shortcuts in Muse, and they are near, nearly all of them are listed here. So if you're looking for something or you want to uh, or make something easier to use. Here's the place to check. And if uh, you have, it's a long list. So there's a search field here. You, you can type pan if you want to know all the one, all the keys that has to do with panning. You can see that Alt Left will change uh, the panning for a mixer strip. You can try that one. So if we have this one selected and I hold Alt key and left, ch check this number down here. Oh, I managed to get into the menu, but here now you can see. And we can also hold Alt and the Shift key to make it move faster if that's what you want. And talking about uh, the strip here, this is, it shows the current uh, track we're on. This is uh, a part of the mixer. We can, if you go to the view menu, uh, you can see that F10 or clicking here, we can bring up the full mixer with all the current uh, strips, tracks we have uh, created. And if we change something here, it changes in, in both places. 
so what else? Well, we can continue looking at the view menu. We have the, the transport panel, uh, which is the kind of old school way of uh, controlling uh, start and playback and all that kind of things. Uh, all the things here are also available through toolbars. So it's a question of what you're used to and how you want to work. So we remove that one and we have, uh, I will talk about the master track and markers and stuff in another video. What else? Is there something else we want to do? We can quickly talk about the metronome. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll control A here and delete everything. Oh, it's gone. Too bad. But we can always bring it back with undo. But right now I don't want to. Uh, in the settings menu here we have a dialogue for the metronome. Where there's a lot of settings uh, for the metronome. For the moment... Uh, let's talk about the audio part. It, this uh, I looked at one of the old videos and this wasn't pre-selected uh, upon startup. These days it is because this is usually the one we want. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's controlled uh, or rather it's uh, depending on which uh, tempo you have it will play at different speeds. And uh, these are some volumes for the different parts. Uh, for now, I would uh, we won't talk about the accents, so we'll, we can just leave them at zero. Uh, the MIDI is uh, the same. Uh, we enable it. Uh, MIDI will be sent to an external keyboard that will play, play something. We have here the MIDI port, which one will receive the MIDI events. So if you have some external keyboard that is well suited for it, it might be useful. Uh, what is not visible here is uh, how we start and stop the metronome. And actually, I realize I probably I often turn up a lot of toolbars. There is a toolbar uh, for the metronome. There it is. Here we have it. So this is the metronome toolbar. And it also has a keyboard shortcut. It's C. So now it turned blue when the metronome is on. So if, we, if I pr press play, nothing, and I press C, we get the metronome. And I turn it off. Uh, like that. That was uh, pretty fast, but I think we'll stop there for this video. See you later. Bye.